Hello everybody, Virtual Rook here, and today I'm hoping that I can teach you how to get started with OpenXR in Godot. Now I will be using Godot 4.3, this should work with future versions as well, but I plan on updating this video if need be as new versions come out. I also really quickly just want to thank Muddy Wolf on YouTube. Their tutorials are basically the backbone about what I'm going to show you today. I just want to make my own version that's a little bit more condensed and adds a little bit more in a single video. So thank you very much to them. Definitely go and check them out because they go into great detail about a lot of other things for XR and Godot. But without further ado, let's get you up and running in Godot VR. Let's go ahead and create a new file. And we're just going to call this uh, XR game. Sure. XR game. We're going to leave it on mobile rendering so that way if you want to use this to like play on your quest or whatever, it should be fine. It should have all everything set up but if you want to do a pc version you can do forward plus that is like the more high-end version i want to explore into that a little bit later in the future but for now let's just do mobile i'm going to turn off the git i don't need it and let's go ahead and create an edit i'm going to be going through stuff pretty quickly so if you have any questions make sure you leave them down below and also maybe hit the like and subscribe button because it really helps out the channel anyway let's get into it we're going to set this as a 3d scene because it's vr so obviously it's 3d we're also going to hit Control and S to save this scene immediately. And we're just going to call this uh, main. So hit save. Let's go down to main, right click on it and set as main scene. And then down here in our file system, let's just go ahead and right click, make new folder. And we'll do worlds, why not? And then we'll right click again, new folder. And we'll call this blueprints. I'm coming over from Unreal Engine. You can call this whatever you want. This is just going to be the folder that I put scenes in that I've built that are going to be added to other maps and things like that. But now in our main map, we're just going to really quickly do Control A and look for a static body 3D. So static body 3D. Awesome. It's going to yell at us because it wants collision added to this. So we'll add a child node by right clicking on it and we'll just type in collision shape 3d okay i'm going to just make the ground plane a box shape but we also want a visual representation of said box shape so we're going to click on our static body again Control a and we're going to type in mesh instance 3d awesome now mesh instance 3d also wants to know what it looks like so we're going to tell it to be a box and right now both of these look identical which is very nice they fit inside of each other which is great so let's click on mesh up here in the top right under size. We're going to set this to something like 10 on the X and 10 on the Z and then like probably 0.1 on the Y. So now it's kind of thin, but it's a good work area. Let's go ahead to our collision shape. Click on the box shape at the top right and do the exact same thing. So 10 0.1 and 10. Okay, so they match now. And then just because I think that this is kind of glaringly white and it kind of hurts my eyes in VR, I'm going to go to the material, new standard material. Again, this is on the mesh instance 3D, not on the collision shape. We're just going to hit new standard material 3D. Click on that. Go to its albedo, color, and then I'm just going to drop it down so we got this nice dark gray. Okay, awesome. So that's our ground setup so we can walk around. Let's go up next to this sun and world button. Hit the three dots next to it and we're just going to add sun to scene and then go back up again and add environment to scene this way we actually cast shadows and can see whenever we start the game and real quick i'm just going to change the static by 3d to ground so that way it doesn't get confusing all right we're still setting things up so let's go to our asset lib up here at the top and in that we're going to search for xr one of the first things that pops up should be the godot xr tools for godot 4 by mux213 so we'll just select that and we'll hit download. It'll add that to our scene. We'll hit install. We might get a couple of failures, but don't worry. I think that this is just because we still have to turn a couple of things on. So we'll hit OK. Go back to 3D just because I like being there the most. And we'll go up to project. Project settings. Now it's super important that we go over to plugins and we turn on the Godot XR tools that we just downloaded. I don't know why it doesn't automatically do this, but you have to turn it on. Then we'll go back over to general, scroll down on the left here until we hit XR, go to open XR underneath that tab and make sure we hit enabled. We also want to go down to reference space, click on that 
and say local floor, this is going to make it that whatever the floor in your headset is, is also the floor that the map represents. Trust me, you want to do this because otherwise it just kind of makes up your height in the game. This is a much better way to do it. And then last but not least, we'll go to shaders and we'll enable the XR shaders. Now, all of these changes actually require a restart. So down here, we'll hit save and restart. And now that it's back up, we just have to do like one more super important thing to get this to run. So up here on our node 3D, which is our main map node, we're going to right click on it and we're going to attach a script. We're just going to leave it as main so that way it doesn't get confusing. We can get rid of all of this but we want to leave extends node 3D. So we'll hit enter. And then here we're going to make a variable, XR underscore interface. Okay. Then we'll do the two dots. And we're going to link that as the XR interface. And we'll come back down here. We'll make a new, a new func ready. And we'll do XR underscore interface, the function that we just made, or the variable we just made rather, equals XR server dot find interface. And we're going to say that we want that to be open XR. So this is just setting open XR as the main way of running VR, because there's a couple of different things. Like I think Oculus has their own runtime for VR and such. We're telling it specifically to use OpenXR, which is basically used by every VR headset. We'll then come down to and we'll do a if XR interface and XR interface dot is initialized. So this is just checking to see whether or not they're actually running and XR is running properly. Then what we would like to do is display server dot window set vsync mode and then inside the brackets we'll do display server dot v sync disabled right there vsync can mess with vr uh, it'll just cause like some graphical errors so we just want to make sure that it's off whenever we test out our game and then down two more lines we'll just get viewport dot use XR equals true. So whenever we go to play the game, it's going to make sure that what we see as an example on our main monitor is the viewport from the XR perspective. I just want to clarify because I know coding can be a little confusing at times. Uh, if you have any questions, just message me down in the comments. That's all we have to do there. So let's go ahead and control S to save and then go back to 3D. And now everything for our main map is set up. It's ready to have an XR character, but we don't have one yet. So let's go ahead and fix that. We'll hit plus up here next to our map, or I guess it's next to our scene that we're currently in to add a new scene. And we'll go to other node and type in XR origin 3D. There we go. Now it's going to give us a warning. It's saying that right now it requires an XR camera 3D child node. So we're just going to add that in real quick. So we'll do control A to bring this back up, or you can just hit the plus, whichever one you feel most comfortable with. And we'll just type in XR camera 3D. And now that warning's gone. Before we go any further, I just like to do control S and save this. We'll go into our blueprints because that's where all of our like scripted scenes or whatever you want to call them are going to hang out. And I'm going to rename this as XR player. Save. So now it's hanging out in our blueprints. Perfect. Now, at this point, you should be able to drag this into your main map and at least look around if you want to. So we could go back to main. We could go down to our blueprints and we can take XR player and just drag it right into node 3D. And we could test it out at this point and at least look around. But I want more functionality. I want you set up to be able to do at least basic things in VR. So let's go back to our XR player and keep working. So we're going to click on our XR Origin 3D up here. And we're just going to hit Control and A to add another node. And this one is going to be XR Controller 3D. Perfect. It's going to also throw a warning, but we're not going to worry about that for just a second. We're going to hit Control D to duplicate it. 
And then we're going to go to our first one and we're going to name it controller underscore left. And this one to controller underscore right. Okay. And then we're going to click on controller left, come on over here onto the right side and under tracker, we're going to set it as left hand. And we're going to go to controller right and we're going to set that to, you guessed it, right hand. Pretty simple. And now the warnings are gone because we actually told it what's in there. And now it knows that we have controller, but we can't see them. So let's make it real quick that we can actually see the controllers. This time I'm going to change up uh, which hotkeys I'm using. So pay attention. We're going to hit control, shift, and then A. This brings up our add-ons, like child scenes. So everything that we got from the XR plugin, this is going to show different things that we can use from that. So in there, we're just going to look up hands. And then we're just going to do, since we're on the left hand or the left controller right now, we'll do left hand low, which is right here. And if you want, you can just type in hand or left hand low and it will show up as well. So we'll open that up and now we have a hand. Yay. And we'll just go to our right controller, control shift A again, and we'll type in right. And we'll see right hand low somewhere around here. Right hand low. There it is. Open. Awesome. So now we have hands. Yay. And then I'm a fan of having actual body collision, so you can't like walk through walls and stuff. Go up to XR Origin 3D, Control Shift A, and then we'll type in player. Then we should get player body, hit open, and that will give us actual physics to the body so that way it can collide with walls and things like that and stop moving. It's important to add. In the offhand chance that that throws a warning about not having a shape, you can just add a collision shape to it and make it anything. Basically a capsule is best and make it a thin capsule, kind of like what we have on screen right now. And just make sure that the bottom of the capsule is moved up so it's at the origin point of our scene. Just like the bottom of this is at the origin point of our scene. But if you hit control save and put on your headset now, you should have hands that follow your controllers and you can still move or, or look around. We can't move around yet, so let's fix that. So let's go back to our XR player. We're going to go to controller left. And we're gonna hit control shift A. We're gonna type in function. And then inside of functions is a bunch of different stuff you can do that we got from the add-on. But for this, we wanna just type in space and movement and direct. This is the directional movement add-on. So add that to your left controller. And then over here, you can see that we can change the speed of it for how quickly we move. But most importantly, we want to make sure that strafe is on. So that way, no matter which way the analog stick is pointing, we keep on, we can even go like diagonal and stuff. And then we can go down to our controller right, do the same thing again, but this time we'll hit control shift A and look for movement turn, which is right here. We'll open that up. And then as you can probably guess, this makes it that our analog stick on our right hand controls the rotation of our character. Over here, there are a bunch of things that you can change, but most importantly for me, I'm gonna go to turn mode, which is set to default right now. I'm gonna set it to smooth because I just think that smooth is better. But if you want, you can set it to snap and then also change uh, the degrees in which you snap turn down here. All right, we're just about at the end, but if you wanted to, you could at this point go and test it out in our main scene and you would notice that you can actually move around and rotate, which is awesome. But I want a little bit more functionality. So let's also make it that we can pick things up. We're gonna go back to controller left, hit control shift A, and we're just gonna type in pick and find pick up. So function pick up right here and open that. And then we can hit control C to copy that, go to our controller right, and then hit control V to paste it. So now it knows that both of those hands are able to pick things up, but only objects that are marked as being able to be picked up. So as far as our character, our character is done. Hit control save. We can close that and we can go back to main. You can see that we have our character right here in the center, which is awesome. But we really want to make objects that we can actually pick up. So let's go to our scene up here. Go to new inherited scene. Uh, we'll go up one because it's probably in your blueprints folder right now. We want to go into the add ons folder. Go to XR tools. And inside of that, there's going to be objects. One of them should be called pick upable. We'll select it and hit open. And this just makes a new scene that has that pick upable object in it. It already has collision shape in it, but it hasn't defined what it looks like yet. 
But before we do anything else, we want to hit Control S to save. And we want to leave this folder entirely. So hit this up arrow to go into parent folders. Keep clicking it until we get to the top where we see blueprints, worlds, and add-ons. Go back into our blueprints. And inside of here, we can just leave it as pick upable object. That's fine. That way we know that this is our base pick upable object, or it will be. So we'll hit save. Okay. And then I'm just going to make it a really simple thing. So let's just go ahead and click on pick upable object in our tree, hit control A, and we're just going to find a mesh instance, 3D, perfect, create. We'll make it a cube or a box, I suppose, in this, so box mesh. We'll select the box mesh, and under size, we'll set to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1. And then we'll go to our collision shape, and we'll hit shape, new box shape, hit, <laughs> click on it, and then in under size, we're going to do the same thing, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Okay, so now they match and it's a little bit old, but that's good because we don't want it to be huge. <laughs> uh, I like to have visual things looking nice, so we're going to go back to the Mesh Instance 3D. We're going to click on its material. We're going to make a new standard material. We'll click on that, go to its albedo. And I just like it teal whenever it's something that I can pick up, so this is perfect. In Control Save, I believe now you could pick it up and it like wouldn't matter where you grabbed it from but we want to be a little bit more specific on how we're grabbing it. So let's go ahead and click on pick up a bull object, hit control shift A, and we are going to look for grab and we'll get grab point hand left, hit open. So now it's here and we have this invisible box because the eye is turned off on this. So we'll turn it back on and now we have a hand. Now you can do all kinds of things like set a hand pose for it, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll let you explore all the different settings that you can do. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and move this so it's basically in a grab position on the cube. Perfect. Yep, that looks like it's grabbing. Awesome. Then we can go to pick up a bull object again, hit Control Shift A, and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're just going to look for the right hand this time. So grab point hand right, open. We'll also turn on the eye, we'll move it into basically the same spot as the left hand, but obviously on the other side. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, and then we're going to just turn both of those off. We'll turn off the eyes on both of those, that way we can't see them. And then we're going to hit Control S, and your pick upable object's done. It's ready to go. We have a cube that we can grab, so we can close that. And then in our main scene, I'm just going to set up a table real quick and add some of these uh, pick up a bull objects that we just made. So give me one moment. Okay, there we have it. Let's hit control S and let's test it out. All right, here we are inside of our game. We can go over, we can pick up the cubes, we can drop them. We use the left analog stick to move around. We use the right to rotate and that should do it. That should get you at least started in VR. So you can start making maps. If you make anything using this, please let me know. I would love to see it. In fact, you can join my Discord, which is in the description down below, and you can uh, share what you make. I would love to see it. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for this tutorial. I hope this helped you out because I really do think that XR in Godot is 100% usable right now, or at least very usable, maybe not 100%, but like it works great. I think it's pretty quick to set up and I just love it. So I'm going to be making you more tutorials. I'm going to be very soon making you a tutorial on how to make a bow and arrow system in Godot VR, so get ready for that. But yeah, I hope this helped you. Please make sure you like and comment and subscribe if you don't mind, because uh, I want to keep making these. I think they're fun. So thank you again. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye for now.